This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? The state of Texas just banned the P-Hub. I'll tell you all about that. There's an update to the George Not Found Katie situation. People are wondering if she's lying. The worst game launch of all time just released. And the CEO of TikTok responds to the entire TikTok ban controversy. Mwah. Here's the boy, you guys said you wanted him, so I deliver, all right? So, I've showed you my indie. You guys gotta like the video, and you guys have to subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys, let's start with this one, bro. Apparently, the hub is getting shut down in Texas. The hub and many other bad no-no sites. Oh, my boy, I feel for my Texans out there. That's right, I'm about to switch to my country accent, okay? If you guys want to come over for some barbecuing, I'll bring you right over. Some good old-fashioned hooly dooly snoop If you go to their website as a Texan, it says, Dear user, as you may know, your elected officials in Texas are requiring us to verify your age before allowing your access to our website. Website. Not only does this impinge on the rights of adults to access protected speech, it fails strict scrutiny by employing the least effective and yet also most restrictive means of accomplishing Texas' state purpose of allegedly protecting minors. While safety and compliance are at the forefront of our mission, providing identification every time you want to visit an adult platform is not an effective solution for protecting users online and in fact will put minors and your privacy at risk. So wait, the government wants to know if you sign it into the hub they want your info they <laughs> they want to identify who you are before you go to a website and search for things that you want nobody to know about right <laughs> So I had to test this, okay? I have a VPN that I would love to show off maybe in a sponsor in the future, you know? But yeah, I used the VPN to go ahead and change my IP address, and now I am a fellow Texan. And I went to the site, and this is what it shows. I thought maybe you have to put in information in order to log in, but no, nah, all you get is a big old message that says this, what I was just reading. I don't know what this actual war is about. It sounds like what they're basically saying is like, hey, if people want to come online... <laughs> <laughs> pun intended, that they should have access to these very well-known protected websites, right? Like the hub, okay, where everything is done above board, okay? But if you don't, and you do this age verification thing, then people are gonna go start going to these weirdo websites where the same stuff, but a lot less regulation, which means you might encounter some bad stuff on there. I guess that's supposed to be the argument that's happening right now, but yeah, that's the hub being banned, okay? And I mean, look, you guys trying to get around it again, what everyone is using is a VPN. Again, like I said, I would love to have a sponsor. Today's sponsor is sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but not today. So the Twinkie King said, did you see that kick band Neon? I did. I heard about it. I don't know specifically what he did, but apparently dudes got the ejecto cito cuzzle from the platform kick. And if you're getting banned on kick, it means you did something really bad. Kick is the platform where they basically like, you'll never get banned here. You free speech and everything. You guys can come over here and do whatever the one. You can get some hookers. You can get drugs. You can go gamble. You can do, you can do whatever the hell we want. You can come out here and you can shoot a person and we'll probably let it slide so if neon is out here getting banned but for those of you guys who don't know uh, this guy this neon is like the steve urkel of the community space okay he he'd been hovering around the whole sphere of like aiden ross and jack doherty and all these young guys who are doing irl streams and then coming out here he's kind of famously or infamously known for having a girlfriend who's been using him with some only fans girl which is using him for a really long time until you know he, he finally got hooked onto that and then she stopped but <laughs> and other things as well but he goes around and people follow him kids i guess apparently might love him or not but he somehow he got banned on kick what did he do magma ice had told me neon was threatening a little kid can't believe kick promotes someone like this neon threatens to oh oh my god no way did he do this was he trying to get banned what what future here if you're listening to me right now it means that i cannot actually show you this clip and me reacting to it because youtube has yeeted it from the platform what neon says to this little kid is literally that bad Look what TikTok has done to our youth. 
Now look, I'm not a stranger to this kind of banter, okay? I played Call of Duty during the worst days, during the most unfiltered times. I'm I'm very used to this yelling back and forth and saying every single word that you can say imaginable to the other person to try to hurt their feelings because you will never get caught, okay? I, I I think a lot of it, it's actually kind of funny as hell, right? Maybe I have a twisted, dark sense of humor, but yeah, I, <laughs> most of the time I think it's funny, but this one kind of crosses the line. That's, 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 that's... What the hell is wrong with you, dog? But yeah, apparently everyone on the internet is smoking that pack watch. Rest in peace, Neon. They love the fact that he's getting banned. Everyone is like, this is a huge W, okay? Finally, this dude has been taken off the internet because it seems like he has a lot of haters. Anyway, that's Neon, okay, getting banned from Kick. I'll let you guys know if it's permanent or not. I, I don't know Kid too much. All I know is that I do see a lot of clips of him being out here. Like, it's I, what I think is happening is a lot of these content creators get big by being super edgy. You got him, you got Jack Doherty or something like that. You, you got all these people try, trying to come out here and just be freaking menaces to society and hoping that they can stream this RL and have a bunch of other kids being like, yeah. Dion, he's our hero kind of thing and then they eventually take it too far and I don't know. I really do not care about the fate of Neon and what happens, but I'll let you guys know if he's permanently banned or if he does get unbanned or if he think big happens, but I don't know, man. I think the whole moral of the story is that a lot of these people get very big-headed, right? The kids, even adults and older people as well, like, they let this fame get to their head. You know, me, I would never do that. If I ever get to the point, guys, where I'm getting paid millions and billions of dollars, I would not flex on you guys with Lamborghinis and, and hot OnlyFans girls and mansions, okay? I would just do that stuff secretly and private you guys I, I, I would still partake you <laughs> you, you just would never know <laughs> so meme lad said my dog and this might be the best news i have seen all day oh my god look at this cutie oh my lord look guys find someone that looks at you like this dog looks at meme lad that's adorable that's a palate cleanser i needed this in my life i needed oh i can feel it i can feel the endorphins coming in can you guys if you guys are watching this if you look at this picture do you just feel the endorphins the good energy the this is what i need to see more of okay you, you get all this crazy stuff that's happening on twitter that's plaguing our minds and meaning feel like the world is a horrible place and then you look over at Meme Lord's dog and you remember, you know what? Actually, life's not too bad. You know, it's this is everything's going to be die job boo. Thanks, Meme Lad, for showing off your baby. The, the, he, she, they, they are an absolute cutie. We got some more random news. Okay, this one has to do with racism. <laughs> and Super, the creator of Super Mario Brothers Z. I don't know if you guys heard of Super Mario Brothers Z. Okay, this is a, a, a huge uh, freaking uh, series that used to exist back in the day in the, uh, what's the name of that website? I... Can't even remember the name of the website. It's been so long, but there's a website where they have a bunch of people make animations. You guys probably know it. It's also originated from Friday Night Funk and it's just kind of escaping the tip of my tongue. But yeah, apparently he came back to the internet. He's getting bashed for a take when it comes to racism. What did he say? He's responding to libs of TikTok. Oh no, that's, well, that's always a bad idea. All right, let's get into the whole political sphere. Let's just, let's just play with it. You know, let's just, you know. <laughs> This is Danny Lelanders, a non-binary game developer. She was hired by Cliffhangers devs to create a game based on Marvel's Black Panther. Okay, okay, no problem so far. She says she doesn't hire white people because they're unsafe and it's hard to work with them and only hires people of color. <laughs> How did we go from something so nice to something of, I just don't hire white people because they are unsafe. There's, okay, okay, let's continue. Let's continue this rabbit hole real fast. I'm, I'm curious. If you're a white person watching this video, that's right. You are unsafe. And that's why you are being racially discriminated against when it comes to, to getting jobs for, for, for video games. I heard about this whole concept of Gamergate that's currently happening right now and I might look into that if you guys want me to but I hear that it's getting kind of wild on these streets when it comes to video games and racism. I have a team of 21 right now uh, for Validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games but who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. 
Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. <laughs> Homie! Do you not realize what you have just said? You've literally, quite literally, this is exactly what racist people say, okay? You, you, you've quite literally taken their exact energy and now have just literally flipped it, but for like black people. Racist white people are like, yeah, I don't want nobody of any color in my circle because, you know, I'm keeping it all in the, the same color, you know? And now we're like, yeah, I don't want to hire anybody who's not of color because of the exact same reasons. You have now become exactly what it is that you fear and hate. Um, and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe unsafe environments. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. Mm, okay. Microaggression. So suggesting that by hiring a white person that while they're making a video game, this white person might be like, hey, are you sure? You want to give DeAndre dreadlocks? I mean, why not just give him, well, you know, the classic tape cut, you know, like, and, and they're like, that's a microaggression against. <laughs> I I'm, I think the irony of the situation is like, literally, there's nuance to, to, to many things, but this is one very clear conception of just basically discriminating and saying that you don't want to work with another person person because of based on their race and their color is just if you just look at it without even trying to go into details without trying to be sounding too intelligent it's just it's just racism that's that's all it is you can try to justify it in every single way that you want you can try to do the whole loop-de-loops you know i'm all about diversity and creating a team that has everybody but if your diversity is quite literally not including a certain group of people then how diverse is that right like we have all kinds of people the whites no <laughs> not the whites <laughs> So anyway, Alvin, that's right. That's what's the name. The guy who created Super Mario Z. He said, people accuse me of being racist for even thinking that Caucasians are being discriminated against and constantly walking on eggshells. So I don't offend anyone. Then you have subhuman filth like this openly admitting to hating white people. I'm so sick of this. I, 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 we didn't say that she hates white people, but it, it, it she definitely exudes that energy, that's for sure. And then we have what I see here is people now dunking on white people. White people like this, when they can only get accepted into 80% of the jobs instead of 90% of jobs. <laughs> And the internet just collectively just starts dunking on white people because they feel like white people are so privileged that if you do like racist things towards them, it should be okay. There's a lot of people who just did not like this retweet. What in the what? I'm so sorry, Super Mario Bros. Vans. Wait a minute. Did he say something so bad that for him to get ratio? What? What am I reading? Let me read this one more time. People accuse me of being racist for even thinking that Caucasians are being discriminated against and constantly walking on eggshells so I don't offend anyone, okay? So that, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of white people out here who are trying not to get canceled for saying something and then, you know, like, ah, you white person, how dare you? I know that's a thing, right? You have subhuman filth like this openly admitting to hating white people. So, okay, the whole part of calling her subhuman filth, that's kind of out of pocket. <laughs> Uh, and she didn't actually admit to hating white people, but what she did admit to was basically racial discrimination, okay? I just wouldn't consider it a hatred, but it's definitely something that I don't agree with. So maybe he is very, very angry that she is basically communicating this energy. And I, I feel like that energy is kind of wild as well to say that you don't hire any white person because you're, you just don't want to deal with them. The, the microaggression, you just don't want to deal with them. That's that's kind of wild. Going back to the tweet now, and I think what's making people so upset is this. Subhuman filth. That's an adjective for the... For the <laughs> that's a way to explain somebody. And I don't think she reached the, 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 the part of being subhuman and filth for saying what she said. I don't agree with her, with her notions of how to run her business. But I wouldn't just suddenly be like, she's subhuman filth, right? If someone expresses racial discrimination in their workforce, I'm not going to... I'm not going to call them subhuman filth, right? So maybe that's what everyone's getting really upset with. And 
And I, I can understand that one as well. Moral of the story, yeah, white people were being discriminated against all the time, okay? Let's not, like, gaslight the white people into thinking that that's not currently happening. I don't want to gaslight white people into thinking that they're, that racism can't happen to them because it's happening in spades, okay? We have normalized the culture and behavior of just dunking on white people, right? Like, what we do, the entire human race has done to just white people and just dunking on them for being white, right? It's not acceptable in any other kind of culture or times of any other people that's happening, but it's normalized because people believe that white people are the upper echelon, the top, they're S plus tier on the list. So the whole concept of punching up is okay, but you, <laughs> and then, and, and, and I don't agree with that. Okay. I do agree that there is a hierarchy, sure, where white people are definitely in more power as a whole, but I don't think that should give people a reason to be racist towards them. Me being the, the biggest racist person in the world knows what racism is. And yes, that's exactly what it is at the same time. Bro, you can't be calling someone subhuman filth like that from zero to hundred. You can say like, yeah, this person's kind of garbage doo doo butter for this, this statement. I don't like, you know, what they're representing and what they're saying. Are you throwing the word subhuman filth? Hmm? Alvin? Hello? <laughs> You got something to say, baby? Like, is there, is there, you got something you want to get off your chest? Because I feel like that's a, a very, very harsh way to to define somebody. And usually those harsh definitions usually come with some some understanding. It sounds like it's, it's pent up white anger. White people have just been the, the beating stick so long. And it's just pent up. And white people are just like, argh, argh, argh. <laughs> <laughs> they keep talking about me and I have to be quiet, but eventually I'm just going <laughs> to, that should be Alvin's uh, Super Mario Z comic, bro. It's just a white guy who's just been the, the bun end of the stick of racism, reverse racism, whatever you want to call it for a long time. And suddenly just pops off. Oh, wait, we, we, we see that happening all the time. But anyway, yeah, that's Alvin. You guys can let me know how you feel about it. I'm joking around with it because I don't really care too much about it in terms of detail. You guys can let me know what you guys think about the racist stuff. But guys, before we get further into today's topics, I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Demon Rush. Oh, baby, I've been waiting to show you guys this. Demon Rush is a brand new trading card game designed by players for the players. It's for those of you who grew up with card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and Pokemon and would like a fresh game without thousands of complicated cards to learn. Pretty easy to play, has a very small learning curve. Now this is the cool part of the video, okay? The guys over at Demon Rush sent me a booster pack for me to actually open up. I've never done any kind of like card opening thing like ever that I can ever think of. This is my first one. So <laughs> apparently there's two incredibly rare cards that I might find in here. Oh. Oh yeah, oh, 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 I'm excited. Holy crap, there's a lot of cards in here. I cannot open all of these up. Mmm, fresh card smell. Look at this bad boy. What the heck? Ghoul the Grave Digger. Uh, hello? All right, all right, let me open up one more, one more. Zadkiel the Angel of Righteousness? Oh my lord. I'll show you guys how to play, but unfortunately I have no friends to play with. But on top of that, these guys are super legit. They've got their own anime series and manga with the voice actors of Jotaro and Giorno Giovanna from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. They've got manga in case you guys want the lore behind all the characters, and they have a very fast-growing Discord community for everybody who wants to learn and play. So yeah, if you guys want to play with me, you guys can head over to their shop at https colon slash slash shop.demonrush.com. We're also hosting a $10,000 cash tournament prize over here in Frederick, Maryland, right around the corner from me. If I have some time, I might stop by, but if you guys want to enter to compete and win, you've got plenty of time to prepare. And again, special thanks to Demon Rush for sponsoring today's video. We have a quick update to this whole George Not Found thing that I'm really just kind of honestly, can I be frank with you guys? I'm kind of tired of talking about it. It's getting a little, it's getting a little bit past the point of just exhaustion okay so i'm just not going to stay on this topic very much i'm just going to give you a quick update on what has been occurring since then by then i mean on wednesday paper Poke said uh update to the whole situation around george not found and they bring me to my guy cavos that's right the leader of the haters ball himself my boy the man <laughs> <laughs> Most infamously known for hating everyone and everything. He said, George not found, essay allegation update. Ghosty, Katie's friend, goes on to clarify even further. The second night when the alleged essay took place, they went to Dreams Hotel with George and it's sober, completely contradicting Katie. The whole story is painted by Katie as a drunk girl's underage drinking who went to the hotel room and were made to drink even more and forced to play drinking games. This completely changes the narrative Katie was trying to paint. She is just a complete 
false narrator at this point. So Kavos and a lot of people online are trying to fact check all this information that's been happening out from Katie, okay? At this point, George Not Found has already said apologized and he said he's going to make a statement later. Dream has already come on Twitter and started crying and making everything about himself. <laughs> but everyone else is trying to look into it and to corroborate the stories that are being given by Katie and her friends and what actually happened that night and they're all playing detective trying to be like, is this a case of Katie just lying or is it true or not? I, how will not be sitting here playing internet detective trying to figure out differing stories from an event that happened last year of 2023 <laughs> <laughs> and multiple people's recounting of a story where everyone is drunk. Okay, there's just no way that I'm going to try to be like, oh, this drunk person said this. No, oh, this drunk person said that. I, I'm just not going to do it. I'll let everyone else do it. But what you need to know is that there's a lot of people on the internet who are doubting Katie's story when it came to the whole recollection of what happened between her and George Not Found. Meanwhile, apparently George Not Found has been removed from the VidCon list for this year, 2024. I'm actually hoping that I can go. I actually signed up to see if I can be a featured content creator actually but yeah he got removed as a featured creator i believe him and wilbur scoot and i don't know if dream was featured there as well but yeah, they're gone. That's it. That's the update. All you really need to know is that people are kind of poking holes at the stories and finding contradictions and trying to figure out what's true or what's not. Again, I'm not going to go into it, but when George Not Found replies, okay, I'll let you know what he officially says. Apparently he had, after his apology, he was going to come out with another statement. That's the person that I'm more concerned about the most because if he's coming out here and he's just accepting responsibility and he's saying sorry and he's taking accountability, then I don't really care about anything else, right? Again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that everyone's playing internet detective trying to figure out if she's lying or not, right? I'm trying to figure out, does George Not Found think that he is responsible for what occurred and was it bad? And if so, if these two people are just going to, you know, hash it out, that's it. And if they hash it out, then we can just move past it and move on. Everything else is just kind of clutter in my opinion. You guys can let me know how you feel about it though. TOX said Invincible is back. That's right. They said who's excited for more Invincible. I'm not excited. <laughs> I love this show. Season two, part two starts Thursday, March 14th. That was yesterday. What is up with the marketing on this show? This is one of the best animated shows on TV right now. And they took in a long like month, maybe two month hiatus since the last episode, which was absolutely a wild ending. And then apparently they was just like, oh, by the way, you know, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody seems to be happy with the way that they're delivering this content. I don't know why they're not just going weekly. I don't know if they're delayed. I don't know what it is, but this is one of the most highly acclaimed animated shows and it's just not like expressing itself in that way. It's not showing itself in a way that people would want to. And people didn't even know what's coming out. People aren't excited for it. It's still going to be dope and peak for sure. Just I wish they would find a different way to market it. Because right now it's just kind of garbage, but I'm going to watch it. You guys should watch it too. I still highly recommend it. For Jacob said the CEO of TikTok has responded. That's right, guys. Uh, yeah, so you guys know we already talked about the TikTok ban. On Wednesday, uh, the House, they voted to ban TikTok, okay? This whole TikTok ban bill, which is basically a Trojan horse in disguise, is secretly going to give them the power to ban any kind of app from a foreign subsidiary. And it's not even just apps. These are websites. This is basically the United States government trying to get more control of what outside forces puts into the country. And, they're, and it's kind of sounds familiar because that's kind of what other countries do like China, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're basically trying to add more regulation and the, the, the concern and the problem with people feel like that is freedom of speech starts to get challenged. Apparently TikTok is one of the biggest sources for news that you can get that's kind of just unregulated, like things that you wouldn't see in news because it's paid off by people and forces you probably don't know and they just don't show it. On TikTok, they like, screw it, I'm gonna just show whatever I want and these guys are massive and when that happens, America and a lot of the news sources lose their ability to control information. It's all about the controlling of information here. That's why sometimes when you see news things come out and you don't see a lot of publicity around it, it's it's on purpose, okay? They're purposely not covering certain things and purposely covering other things to kind of dictate what it is that's being fed to your mouths or should I say your ears or your eyes. In fact, I'll show you this quick 40 second clip here. Hopefully this goes through, but it's at least sponsor of the TikTok bill, Representative Mike Gallagher admits the real reason that they're rushing to ban TikTok because it's becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30 and the US government doesn't control it like other platforms. Like I said, it's all about 
control, okay? Don't worry. No one's going to control me here, okay? Unless I get paid out by somebody with billions of dollars, all right? If I start coming out here and I start talking about a robot, if I come out here and I sound wild, like this don't sound like Omni, it's because I got bought out for millions of dollars, okay? The bag was so big that... <laughs> I am now the mouthpiece of the government. Only impacted sites are those associated with foreign adversary apps, such as TikTok.com. It can never be used to penalize individuals. The text explicitly prohibits that. And it cannot, cannot be used to censor speech. It takes no position at all on the content of speech. Only foreign adversary control. Okay. Foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. So they're essentially, you know what's interesting about this whole thing is that the government is working. <laughs> They're being very effective and very fast, unironically, bipartisanship. The government is suddenly coming to do something to protect us Americans? Uh, hello? After, after we've been complaining about 50 million other things that are happening within our country, suddenly they're, they're all on the same page when it comes to this bill? That's kind of weird in my opinion. It feels like to me that whenever the government is actually functioning, right? Whenever they're actually agreeing on something, I feel like that's when we should be like, whoa, whoa, time out. <laughs> Why are y'all being so effective? Why is this working so well? Why are we going through this process so quickly? Why are you guys all on the same page here? I think that's the biggest red flag because there's a lot of issues in America people have been complaining about for a long time now and that stuff never gets addressed. But this, this TikTok man, apparently they're just so gung-ho about protecting us United States Americans and that's why they're coming to, I don't know. Uh-uh-uh, I don't know, brother. Anyway, after the TikTok ban passed in the house, this is the CEO of TikTok. I've seen this guy several times. I, I like him. <laughs> He seems like somebody who's not 75 years old, right? Trying to control the country, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe he has bad intentions. I don't know. I don't know the secret N words of what's happening right here. But when I see him being testified on Congress, he seems like one of the most sane people in the room, okay? Just from what I've been observing. I've shown you guys clips in the past and and yeah. But yeah, what does he have to say? It's a minute and 40 seconds. What does he want to say about what is going on? Everyone the show here just wanted to share some thoughts with our U.S. users about the disappointing vote in the House of Representatives. There has been a lot of misinformation, and I hope to clarify some things. First, thank you to our incredible community. You are what makes TikTok so special. Thank you for making your voices heard. Over the last few years, we have invested to keep your data safe and our platform free from outside manipulation. We have committed that we will continue to do so. This legislation if signed into law, will lead to a ban of TikTok in the United States. Even the bill sponsors admit that that's their goal. This bill gives more power to a handful of other social media companies. It will also take billions of dollars out of the pockets of creators and small businesses. So the argument here, guys, for those of you who don't know, is essentially it comes down to this. If they ban TikTok and or to get TikTok to sell to United States uh, person, then the media that's being controlled is all within the same country, okay? You got Meta with Instagram and Facebook, and you've got YouTube with YouTube Shorts, okay? You've got all of these social media sites. You got Twitter, right? As long as they're owned by people who are in the United States, then what the United States, you know, wants to control in terms of information information is within their grabs, okay? But TikTok is one of these social media sites that's not. They don't have the control over it. And so people are getting information and being privy to news that maybe the government doesn't want you to see. It's crazy because a lot of things that we've been learning about what's happening around the world, what's happening with the war on Gaza and Palestine and everything like that, what we're learning seems to be because we have outside agency and forces that not being controlled on there. So while I feel like TikTok might be bad in a lot of ways, destroying our kids in terms of their attention span. <laughs> I agree with that, right? I think TikTok is, is in a lot of ways absolutely terrible, but it also seems like TikTok is also a bit of a freedom of speech regulation as well. And then it comes down to the question is, is do you guys believe that China is out here trying to spy on the United States and take all of our information using TikTok? And again, 
I don't know. All I know is that when the government wants to try to enforce a bill to take more power and control, you, you, you should raise an eyebrow, okay? As much as you hate TikTok, you should probably be on alert because if this ban does pass, you might find that, yeah, the government has even more stronger hold on you than you thought. It will put more than 300,000 American jobs at risk and it will take away your TikTok. We know how important TikTok is to all of you. It has given our 170 million users a platform to freely express themselves and has empowered more than 7 million businesses in the United States. Our platform matters to the small business owners who rely on TikTok to make ends meet, to the teachers who inspire millions of students to learn, and to everyone who discovers and finds joy on TikTok. We will not stop fighting and advocating for you. We will continue to do all we can, including exercising our legal rights to protect this amazing platform that we have built with you. We believe we can overcome this together. I encourage you to keep sharing your stories. Share them with your friends. Share them with your family. Share them with your senators. Protect your constitutional rights. Make your voices heard. Yeah. Okay, make your voices heard, blah, 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 blah. These guys are all bought out, bro. I, I need to stop. I'm sorry, guys. For those of you guys who, like, believe in our government and, and like, you know, I'm sorry that I, I, I want to stay here. I want to state that I do have a bias. I like to be objective on a lot of situations. But, like, when I talk about making your voices being heard, I have such a corrupted and jaded concept when it comes to our government. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't go out there and vote, okay? You should <laughs> continue to execute your constitutional rights. Okay, I'm not trying to argue that. I just, I, I have little faith in that system that's being built. It, to me, it feels like a veil and it feels like a lot of the control that we want to have has already been taken away from us. I don't want that to take away from you guys going out there and voting, calling your senators and doing what you feel like you need to do, whether that's banning TikTok or trying to keep TikTok. <laughs> Go out there and exercise your rights and try to do whatever it is you feel is right. The reason why I don't have a lot of faith in our system is because I feel like our system is controlled by people like this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. But if Universe said, hey, what conventions you think you might check out this year? Hey, how's it going, bro? Uh, with a little bit of Omni, where am I going to be if I'm going to be touching grass? I don't know. Yet, I've been in a place where uh, sometimes the conventions I go to, uh, I start getting tired and exhausted. And I just want to go home. But there are some places that I am trying to go. I uh, did hope that I can go to VidCon Anaheim. I've never been to a VidCon before. So uh, that would be really cool to go to, not only to see you guys, but to see me, to see other content creators and stuff. I'm hoping that I can go to VidCon. Baltimore that's going to be happening I think in October um I'll probably go to Otakon which is in August maybe I don't know I've been going for the past two years and I enjoy it but I don't know if I'm going to make a third appearance we'll see and then there's also another con that's happening in September that I may go to I'm, I'm a little bit iffy on there the VidCons I would love to everything else I'm not too sure because I don't know how I feel about going out and touching grass. I enjoy the conventions, but then I sometimes find myself, like I said, exhausted. And also like a lot of people get sick. Like I wear a mask everywhere just so that I can make sure that I don't get sick. But it's sometimes people just come out and then COVID, it's just COVID parties. And I don't want to get sick anymore. All right, I've had COVID. <laughs> I don't want it again. It's so, it's such a terrible feeling when you go out to these places and you come back and now you're sick for an entire week. Not only does it affect my ability to make content with you guys, but I'm sick. <laughs> I don't want that life. So I don't know what I'm going to do for conventions. I'll let you know. Like, I'll give you guys a heads up if I do ever go out and touch grass. And if you guys are touching grass with me, just like how Piccolo is in this picture, then yeah, we can go touch grass together. So Shantae said, hey, can you talk about like how you got your cat or something? There's a lot of people who like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break from your normal news for you guys to get some ND lore, a little bit palate cleansing, okay? Because I know that sometimes we talk about things on our channel that kind of makes you guys feel like, man, Omni, the world is so doom and gloom. It's not. It just so happens that sometimes when it rains, it pours, and I'd like to focus on some of the fun stuff. ND, my boy, where is he? I think he's sleeping now. I can't get him right now, but it's a very quick story. I wanted a cat a long time ago. He's almost 10 years now, and I went to Craigslist and uh, found that bad boy, and then he was just so cute. It was like some kittens. Someone was selling some kittens. I don't even think I saw a picture, but it was like they were selling Himalayans. They went to a parking lot and they showed me Indy and he was the size of my hand, one hand. He could sit 
on my hand and go to sleep and he was such a little freaking baby and the woman who brought him over to the parking lot was kind of like yeah we we have too many our litters we had too many kittens and we had to you know give a few we're selling a few because we've got too many and there's somebody who's allergic blah 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 i don't remember what her story was but she was a sweetheart anyway it was love at first sight when i saw that little boy and then i brought him into the home and he threw up <laughs> and it was putrid this boy unleashed i don't know if he threw up or if he every boo boo or whatever it was just nasty came into the home and just unleashed the, the the dragon of just nasty toxins and then ever since then he's been fine he's never kind of made a mistake but he's been such a good boy he's never like scratched he's so timid and nice and sweet but he's playful he loves to play um i just i love that boy so much with all my heart i feel like he's saved my life in so many different ways it's, it's wild i think it's a feeling that only like fur babies can understand how an animal can just change and shift your life because he's been a part of my life almost like daily you know and it, he brings me not just like the whole dopamine thing but just comfort relaxation sometimes when i'm sad he's laying next to me sometimes when i'm really happy he's playing next to me i love that little boy it's crazy i didn't think i could become so attached to a, a, a an animal a freaking pokemon like creature that's walking around existing in my household and yet uh here i am i love that boy I, I, he needs to live to be like older than me because I, I cannot live in a place where indy is no longer gone i love that man so much but yeah that's the lore between indy and me just talking about how much i love my boy this one seems to be absolutely huge news the fact that the battlefront classic collection was probably one of the worst game launches ever uh told by my boy zach and a lot of you guys the internet the gaming space is so angry okay now i don't play star wars games or nothing like that but there's a lot of people who do who were really excited for this game this classic condition it sounds like it was a game that was coming out for the switch maybe on steam and it was just basically bringing it back and apparently the launch was dookie balls reading here seb had said ten thousand people playing on launch night only has three servers <laughs> what <laughs> that have 64 slots for a total of 200 players what <laughs> yo you only had six you could only have two what multiplayer doesn't work otherwise price tag of 35 dollars jesus christ i'm so disappointed this is robbery don't buy star wars battlefront classic collection there's no way zero options to party out with friends no quality of life improvements about is the laziest port i've ever seen this person says since i was sucking into pre-ordering it i compiled a summary of the bug reports for the star wars battlefront one and two collections so far enjoy it's two pages of bugs names like jack charlotte muffin potato and monkey can't be used because they're offensive <laughs> You can't say Jack. It crashes when searching for multiplayer games on console. Crashing in offline galactic conquest. No inverting aim. Aim inversion is able by default in flight with no way to change it. The game can't be registered. No AI heroes. AI won't use vehicles on certain maps. Horrific Neko locked to 30 frames per second. Too much aim assist and single player. No dead zones on sticks. Terrible textures. The add all the maps button on instant action is missing. Invisible barriers on the maps that weren't present before y'all got god oh my I, I feel bad for you guys apparently the devs actually responded to the concerns already saying hey we'd like to thank the battlefront community for their overwhelming support and feedback for the star wars battlefront classic collection release at launch we experienced critical errors with our network infrastructure the result was incredibly high ping matchmaking errors crashes and servers not appearing in the browser since launch we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability and we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilized to prevent further outages please continue to report <laughs> god damn it sounds like this is one of the most awful remakes and launches of a game in a long time since uh, i guess we have the day before yesterday or after tomorrow and then other games like i remember cyberpunk was really bad as well but as you guys can see it's only been one day and it's mostly negative okay 21 percent of the user reviews for this game are positive okay that means that only one out of five people are actually enjoying this game and i remember a lot of a lot of my star wars friend nerds were really excited to replay this game they're like oh star wars battlefront collection this is a w yes i cannot wait and now they're out here suffering some of you out here probably have already kind of encountered this but this is just a warning if you guys wanted to play this game it sounds like you might want to wait until they fix it because it sounds like it's garbage doo-doo butter <laughs> Bless me. Yo, Snacks said, uh, tell us about any games 
you have in your backlog. Yeah, I can talk about man. I'm I'm still I'm terrible when it comes to games in my backlog, okay? Because I still keep playing Slay the Spire. I can't stop. I'm addicted. I stopped for the longest time and now I'm back. It's genuinely just the most fun game to play of all time. You can play it on the toilet, you can play it when you're sleeping, you can play when you're sitting on the couch. You can just I can just play it on my Switch whenever. And every time I play it with the, the, the four characters, I, I I honestly think I might love this game more than I like Smash. And I really love Smash, but it's hard hard for me to play games when I keep coming back to that stupid game and then when you play it it's hard to stop because you run through a whole run and I'm really good at it too as well so I, my runs usually last at least an hour and I pause in between so anyway the whole point was my backlog let's see I want to play that new game Unicorn Overlord uh, that's kind of like similar to like Fire Emblem I would love to play another tactical type fighter game so that one's on my list um, I'm playing Final Fantasy 7 Remake right now but I'm going pretty slow I've been working a lot when it comes to content here for you guys and stuff in the background so i haven't actually had time to play that many video games and or stream what else i'm getting ready for stardew valley the the patch update that's happening this month so that's not really on my backlog but it's going to create some more backlogs uh there was another rpg that i did not finish and i just did not get to persona 3 reload i didn't finish that game okay i didn't get to finish enjoying that because then final fantasy 7 remake came out <laughs> freaking side orders platoon 3 i didn't get to finish climbing the spire because more games i just man god dang man if only there was a way for me to play video games and make money at the same time if only there was some type of service that content creators can uh basically do where they can relax and have fun and play video games uh, and, and somehow monetize it. If only I knew what that meant. Yeah, those are kind of some of the games in my backlog. There's more that I want to play as well. It's just, it's going to take a while for me to go through the whole catalog that I currently have. My, my backlog is forever long existing. I, I've, I've accepted the fact that I will never actually accumulate and beat all the games that I want to play. I've accepted it. It was hard for me to get to that point, but now that I'm at peace. <laughs> I'm at peace knowing that when I play a game that sometimes I just won't finish it and I will be moving on to the next. I hate it. The completion in me to me hates that concept, but it's just impossible. There's there's just too much content to consume. But alright guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you made it to the end, drop a like, subscribe if you guys haven't already. I'll catch you guys next Monday. Again, I, again, I keep saying that I might drop some random content like randomly throughout the week because I might. <laughs> but I'm tired. I'm always tired like Markiplier. So I'll do what I can when I can. But thanks for watching and thanks for listening, homies. I'll catch you guys later on the next episode. I love y'all. I'll keep working on the stuff on the background that I'm working on and I hope you guys are having a nice day and protecting your mental health, okay? Sometimes the world is kind of wild, so take a step back from all of this reading and doom scrolling on twitter i'll make sure to guide you to the promised land of of mental freedom and, and not falling into the abyss because you know if you stare too much into the abyss it stares back at you you got to be careful all right and i got you covered i love you guys y'all take it easy enjoy the weather it's pretty nice out the cherry blossoms are probably out there as well so um and i'll catch you later all right that's it <laughs> all right peace